Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on the Lunar Recycle Phase 1 submission for the Prototype Build Track. I'm Elisa Ferguson, and I work with NASA on the design and operation of this challenge. We're grateful for your interest in this challenge, and we look forward to seeing your solutions. Let's go to the first slide. Today, we'll provide some helpful background and tips for completing your Phase 1 submission to the Prototype Build Track. We have a separate tutorial video that walks through the submission template for the digital twin track. That video is also available on the challenge website. In today's tutorial, we will review the timeline for phase one, review how to submit, walk through the submission template that you'll use for your submission, answer some common questions about the challenge rules and the template, and encourage all of you to get started on your submission if you haven't already. Of course, if, uh, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us by email at lunarecycle at ua.edu. Before we dive into the submission process, we'll review a quick overview of phase one. In phase one, teams will submit a design for hardware components and systems. Phase one submissions are due March 31st at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Judging will take place in April and May, and the winners are expected to be announced in June. Up to eight U.S. winners will each receive $75,000, and up to three international teams will receive recognition. Teams can register for the challenge and upload their submissions on the registration and submission platform. You can access this platform from the Apply page of the challenge website. We've also created a separate video walkthrough of the registration and submission platform, which you can access on the resources page of the challenge website. For the prototype track, teams must submit several items, a completed submission template, a link to a short pitch video describing their team and solution, and answers to some questions regarding your net waste recycled. The questions about net waste recycled will be things that you have already answered in your submission document. We'll talk more about those when we walk through the template. Finally, we've created detailed instructions for both registration and submissions on the FAQs page of the challenge website. Our FAQs have expanded considerably since the challenge opened, and they should always be your first stop if you have questions about any aspect of the challenge. Now let's review the instructions for the template. The template can be downloaded from the challenge website. It can be found on both the apply page and the resources page. We've received a lot of questions about whether submissions can be made in various languages. Unfortunately, all submissions must be in English and we will not be able to review any submissions that are not in English. The submission must be a PDF file and no more than 20 pages. I want to point out a small update that we made recently. A team pointed out a typo in the template regarding the size of a page. A page is considered standard letter size paper, which is eight and a half inches by 11 inches. A previous version of the template had eight inches instead of eight and a half. So please use standard letter size for your pages, but also no one will be penalized if they have a page that is eight by 11 instead of eight and a half by 11. Finally, in the template, we've provided recommended page limits for each section, but these are intended to be guidelines, not requirements. Teams may allocate space to different sections as they see fit, as long as they stay within the overall 20 page limit. Now we're gonna to turn to the template. We're going to skip over the instructions because we just discussed them on the previous slide. So we'll start directly with section one of the template. Section one is where you will include your team information. The last part of this section, part 1.6, asks for a brief description of your solution. Be sure to avoid any confidential information in this description, as it may be used in public communications regarding the challenge. The next section, section two, has several questions regarding the innovative aspects of your solution. Innovation is an important part of this challenge, and we encourage you to be as detailed as possible in your answers. The the, 
almost last part of this section, part 2.6, is a question about how your solution will handle uh, lunar dust. We want to note that lunar dust is not one of the environmental conditions that teams are required to address. However, we're interested in whether there are any aspects of your solution that might be resistant to, to dust. If your solution does not have these characteristics, that's completely fine, and you can just say that in your answer. The next section, section three, is really the most important part of the submission. This is where you'll describe your recycling and manufacturing process. You'll remember from the challenge rules that in the prototype track, teams may, but are not required to, include the manufacturing of one or more end products in their design. Teams may end their process with the production of one or more commodities, fuels, or feedstocks instead of one or more finished end products. So it's up to you how far you want to take your process. We also want to note that many of these questions ask for pretty detailed technical information. At this point in phase one, your team may or may not have done all of the analysis regarding your design to answer all of these questions fully. We encourage you to be as detailed as possible in your answers. However, we understand that your answers, analysis, and estimates may be preliminary at this point in time. That's completely fine. Now I'll walk through each of the parts of section three. In part 3.1, we're asking you to identify the waste category or categories and waste items that your process will address. All the eligible, eligible waste categories and waste items can be found in table four of the challenge rules. We also ask you to estimate the percentage of each waste item that you will recycle and the types and amounts of material in each item that you recycle. Let's, let's explain a little more about that second part. You'll see on the screen here a portion of table four from the challenge rules. This table is in the rules document, not the template, but we added it here for this tutorial so that we could show it to you while we explain an example. So let's say your solution is focused on the fabrics waste category, and you will recycle all three of the items listed in that category, meaning clothing, washcloths, and disinfectant wipes. But in terms of materials, you'll recycle only the cotton and cellulose materials in each item. In that case, you could explain that you will recycle 100% of the washcloths, 100% of the disinfectant wipes, and 56% of the clothing, because 56% is the percentage of cotton and cellulose in the clothing. This is the kind of explanation in detail we expect in part 3.1. Moving on to the next part, in part 3.2, we're asking you to identify the usable outputs that will come out of your process. These are the things that you will produce from the recycling process. They may be either feedstocks that can be used to manufacture end products or actual finished end products that are similar to a commercially available product. In part 3.3, we're asking you to describe the hardware systems and components that make up your process. We encourage you to include illustrations, schematics, or other visuals of your systems and components in your submission. These can be included here or in section four of the submission, which we'll discuss in a few minutes. Part 3.4 asks you to describe your concept of operations so that we can understand your production cycle. Please note that we are particularly interested in whether your process will require crew time and how much and for what activities. As you'll remember from the challenge rules, teams are encouraged to minimize the, crews, the crew time required for operating the recycling process. Part 3.5 asks you to describe what maintenance you anticipate your system will require. Please be sure to note any crew time that will be required for maintenance activities as well. In part 3.6, we'd like you to estimate the resource inputs that will be required for your process. We've provided a table that you can use to organize this information. Generally, you should include a resource inputs table for each waste category that you are addressing. However, as noted in the template, 
If your recycling process addresses more than one waste category simultaneously, you may provide just one table for multiple waste categories. We've received some questions from teams noting that if a team's design includes both recycling and the manufacturing of finished products, it's likely to require more energy and other inputs. I would say maybe, maybe not. But we understand the concern behind the question. We do not want teams to feel discouraged from including manufacturing in their process because they believe they will be at a disadvantage in the judging with regard to efficiency. In phase one, there is no objective numerical target or maximum for resource inputs like electricity or water. We encourage teams to minimize inputs in relation to your process. The judges will be looking at your design and system holistically and assessing your efficiency based on the design you have proposed. In the next part, 3.7, we're asking you to describe any unusable outputs that will result from your process. These include any materials or substances extracted from waste items that are not processed into a feedstock or end product, as well as wastewater, excess chemicals, hazardous materials, or any other substance that is left over from and unusable in the recycling process. This is also where you can describe any PFAS or microplastics that might result from your process. In the last part of this section, uh, part 3.8, we address your net waste recycled. Net waste recycled is a rough estimate of how much waste your solution will recycle. In phase one, we've tried to simplify the calculation of net waste recycled so that the judges can have a sense of how much waste each item can recycle without requiring teams to do a lot of detailed analysis to get to that number. Instructions for calculating net waste recycled and several examples are included on pages 22 and 23 of the challenge rules and here in the submission template. Of course, if you have questions about net waste recycled or how to calculate it, you can reach out to us. Also at the beginning of this tutorial, I mentioned that when you upload your submission, you'll also need to answer a couple of questions about net waste recycled. The first question on the submission platform that you'll need to answer is, what is your net waste recycled? Your answer should be a whole number. The second question asks for an explanation of your net waste recycled number. Your explanation should be a simple sentence similar to the example explanations on page 23 of the challenge rules. These instructions are also provided on the submission platform. Your net waste recycled number and explanations should be the same in your submission and for the questions you answer on the submission platform. Next, we'll move to section four of the submission template, which covers some more details about your hardware and components. In part 4.1, you should provide any preliminary schematics for your hardware, including, if possible, assembly level CAD models. If you do not have CAD models, please feel free to provide any other illustrations or schematics. In part 4.2, We've provided an equipment table for you to fill out with the details about various components that will be part of your solution. At this point in time, you may not have a comprehensive list of every component in your system. That's completely fine. Please just include as many components and details as possible. Finally, we have section five of the template which is focused on information related to how you are thinking about the development of your solution after phase one is complete. You can think about these sections as an opportunity to build the judge's confidence in your ability to execute this project if you move forward in the challenge. In part 5.1, you should describe your project plan for advancing your design and building hardware components and systems. This should include the technical steps as well as how you will address the necessary personnel, facilities, and other resources that you will need. In part 5.2, you should identify any known risks with development of your design and some strategies for minimizing risks, whether technical, organizational, or budgetary. 
No project is free from risk and understanding and planning for how things could go off track is an, an important part of your development plan. Finally, part 5.3 provides a budget table for you to estimate your costs to develop your solution. As noted in the template, NASA is not focused on comparing the overall cost of solutions in this challenge. Rather, this section is intended to assess how well teams have thought through the budget necessary to build their solution. Now we'll shift back to a final slide to review some key information. In terms of next steps, please complete your registration if you have not already. This includes uploading your executed team agreement and the required documents verifying your citizenship and insurance or financial responsibility. Your registration cannot be verified without all of these documents. You can find the submission template that we walked through today on the apply page or the resources page of the challenge website. I know there was a lot covered in this tutorial. Many common questions have already been answered on the FAQs page of the challenge website. So check those out first if you have questions. Again, the deadline for submissions is March 31st at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That date is coming up soon, and it's never too early to get started on your submission. As always, if you have any questions about registration, eligibility, the submission, or the challenge rules, you can always reach out to us at lunarecycle at ua.edu. Occasionally, teams have tried to reach out to us via other websites and email addresses. But if you use any other email address or website, your question may not be reviewed and answered in a timely manner. So please always use the email address lunarecycle at ua.edu. Thank you for watching this tutorial, and thank you for competing. We look forward to seeing your submissions in March.